All right, so we played with shapes a little bit, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to play with shapes because the more you do it, the more you're going to get comfortable with it. With the rounded rectangle we had before, we had a control point. And in this case, or excuse me, in this case, we're also going to have that. That rounded rectangle gives you the opportunity to make some changes to the curve at the on the rounded rectangle. So let's look at that. Here are a couple simple rounded rectangles in their three different colors. They're quasi skin color, obviously not exactly skin color. And I would like you to insert a rounded rectangle of your own as well. Now, let's make it closer to the proportions of a face. In other words, narrower on the side and a little longer up the top to be more representative of a head. And let's adjust the color a little bit and let's find a color that's a little bit more comfortable uh, for us. Again, we're going to do something that kind of represents skin color, but not exactly. And you could play with these numbers a little bit. Well, I don't know if you would like to do that. That's, that, that's not exactly healthy skin color. So let's change that a little bit more. Actually, let me say, if you're doing these or, or you're going to be creating people or avatars represented in PowerPoint, one of the things I suggest you do is, you know, simply Google um, skin tone and RGB. And you'll find various references to for different groups, different ethnic groups, different nationalities, and they'll give you the RGB representative of those different skin tones, which are great because if you're trying to do someone who is, say, an Inuit or somebody from Korea, or you're trying to do somebody from in a particular region of Africa, they will give you those RGBs and they'll give you a little picture also to show you the representative representation of that color on skin. So when you, the more PowerPoint you do, inevitably you're probably going to make avatars. You're going to, maybe you can't find the right images you want for, to represent a particular product or thing. And there are many times where I've just made avatars just to be generic people. That way I can have exactly what I want. So let's look at this one. So let's look at the start of a person here. So we have this rounded rectangle, right click and choose our edit points. Oh, I'm having a little issue with that. Let's try it again. Huh. Oh, that happens. Okay. Let's just go to drop down menu edit points. That's fine. All right. Now you notice along the edge of the rounded rectangles, right? Where the different lines join, you'll see the little black dots or little black squares, rectangles where they both bend or where different lines meet. You can actually control any one of those points. That's the beautiful thing about using edit points. So if you notice when I go down to the bottom, it looks like a typical cursor. But if I scroll down, I can also make it look like a little square with four lines coming off the side. I can click that and add a point. Oh, let's try that again. Let's go to, let's go to the drop down menu. That's fine. Either way. Okay. So see where I dropped the black point there. Now I can drag that down. And one thing you notice, not only do you have a black dot, but you also have these little lines with these white rectangles and those wet white rectangles are part of the control handles. So I can drag it down or drag it off and it will control the bend of the curve, which is great. So in other words, you have the dot there and by manipulating those sides, we can control the curve. So if you look now, this looks more like a person. We have a jawline and a chin. So let's zoom in. There we go. And we could further refine this curve pretty easily. And we'll just drag around these points a little bit more. So it looks more like a, a natural bend of a jaw manipulate these so the curves not so steep there Here, get us something we want that looks better so now they're just a rounded rectangle we have something that does indeed look more like a face again you can see the 
sides of the face and we can see the jaw and we can see the chin we can see the chin of the area so this is what we want here so now let's see about inserting another one because again just like any other shape we can add multiple shapes on top of each other to get what we want so let's add a square and we'll use that square as a representative of hair for the individual that we're going to do so we're going to shorten that rectangle a little bit doesn't be as tall there we go that's closer to the hair let's change the color let's make it a blonde maybe yeah sure come a blonde you want to turn off the outline and if you were going to leave an outline, you would maybe use a dark, slightly darker yellow to make it look more natural. All right, we'll click on that. Let's see about editing the points. And what we'll do is, whoop, drop down menu again. Here you go. There you go. I added a point in and we'll grab that point and we can drag it where we want. So as you can see, I'm dragging up to give it a slight bend and grab those control points and drag it out a little bit. Because again, I want to put a curve on this. So it looks like the person has a partner hair. There you go. And again, this doesn't just work with points that we added. We can do it with pre-existing points. So we click on any of these other ones. We could also grab the control handle and control the curve there. So now I have a little person with a little flat top. There you go. That looks great. Okay, let's add some more shapes to make some more aspects of the face. We'll grab a circle here. We'll shift click down. Yep, grab both parts. Let's just click one of them. There you go. There you go. Well, we'll drag that mouth to be more like an oval rather than a circle. Unless you're singing or something, you don't need your mouth like that. Okay, we'll do some more changes. We'll change to the appropriate colors. We'll take off the appropriate outlines. And let's edit the points again. And I'm going to drag this top point just to flatten out the top of the mouth. So we have a curve at the bottom of the mouth, and we'll manipulate these points a little bit on the side. There we go. That looks a little bit more in line with what we want and what we expect in the mouth. There you go. There you go. So now the guy has a little smile. So we have a mouth. Pretty simple. Let's add a nose while we're at it here. Let's, let's grab a triangle, I think, for this. There we go. And what I'll do here is we'll manipulate the color. Let's zoom in a little bit so we get a better perspective on it. And let's format the shape. Actually, let's edit the points first. I want to I want to add a point so that again the natural curve of the nose we could put it there at the bottom. There you go. And now we'll go in through and change the colors. I'll turn off the outline. We're going to change the right skin tone because hopefully you'll have a blue nose. And let me show you how we'll actually do that with a gradient. A gradient shape will give us more what we expect. So now as you can see in the gradient, we, it defaults to four, but we're going to take off two of them and we're just going to use two basic colors. So now we'll change those colors to be again, more along the lines of skin tone. So there's one with the proper skin tone. The next one will be very similar. Um, but we'll just darken it a little bit because usually one side of your nose based because of the shadow is going to be a little bit darker than the other. So let's drag those two color points next to each other 
and we'll change the angle. There you go. So look at that. So now the shadow is cast on one side of the nose. And again, this looks more what you more would expect. By putting the gradients right next to each other, that's where you get that nice hardened line. If you have the two color points far apart, it's going to blend more. But if you put them right next to each other, you get that nice hard line in between, again, casting that good shadow. And let's drop a shadow underneath the nose that we would expect as well. And yeah, let's just change the distance and maybe turn down the transparency so that's not so dark. There you go. That's a little bit better. Turn it down to one. I think that's about right. Yeah, two. Yeah, I think two actually looks a little bit better. Let's make it a little bit more transparent. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Well, maybe not perfect, but it definitely looks looks. It's a good representation. So, so, so that's how we make a control face. Now, again, any of these shapes, any shape you make, any shape that is already pre-existing, you control the edit points. And here's one other thing that a lot of people don't know about. Besides just edit points on a shape, um, but when you're creating a lot of these. It's going to be very important not just to have the shape, but actually have some type of name that you could remember. So if I have five, ten people, or I have multiple objects on here, um, PowerPoint has a naming convention, you know, square, or whatever, rounded rectangle, whatever. That's not necessarily helpful if you have a lot of objects on there. So I'll click on the hair, and if you look under Format tab, If you go to the right, you're going to choose Select Pane. And see Select Pane? Rectangle. We definitely don't want that. So we're going to change it to something we know. So we'll change it to blonde hair. There you go. So now the good thing about that is not only does that change on the selection pane, but if you get to other things where you want to animate, and you open up the animation pane or you want to add an animation pane, you can then also look in your look to make sure that you're animating the right thing. So it says blonde hair in the animation pane. Again, very handy. If you've ever made a lot of different PowerPoints, you'll start animating things and you will have no idea what it's animating. Or you'll have to guess. Sometimes I've plenty of times I've had to go behind people and make their PowerPoints better and I'd have to spend so much time going through and naming everything or giving everything a proper name. So let's change this rounded rectangle uh, for the face. Yeah, I'll call it face one because in case we decide to put multiple faces on here, we'll just call it face one. Call this mouth. Yeah. So again, we can name, I think I'll call it mouth one. But again, you didn't, you didn't have to, you could just call it smile if you want. Choose a nose, change that to nose one again. Just double click into selection pane and you could get the names. So we'll call it nose one. Oh, mouth one. There you go. Now, all these have proper names. So we can, again, if we ever have to manipulate it, if we ever have to do any animations, if we have multiple faces on here and we want to make sure that we're changing the right things you really want to go through the selection pane to do that. And it's not an obvious thing. I, I found very few people actually know how to do that type of thing. But that would be very handy. And I wish you could do it in directly in the animation pane or directly in the um, format shape, but you can't do it through selection pane. So now we have at least a basic face. And it's going to be really important when you play with these, when you make more, that you name these things and you play with it. It's the only way to get better. So let's look at, I'll drop another shape in here as you can see. And let's manipulate this other shape a little bit more just so that it goes with this face. And again, just so that you can see that it's not limited to one type of thing. So let's our drop down menu, edit points. And here's our control points. We'll move them in. We'll grab this guy and we'll make it look like he has a little shirt on. And we'll manipulate these points, see, kind of around the shoulders there. And the cool thing about this, again, this is something you might have had to go to a designer for before. And now you, you really don't have to. You can do this kind of stuff yourself, which is great. So let's add another point. Go to 
there you go let's go to the draw edit menu edit points here you go see the point i dropped in drag that down so we got a little v-neck uh sweater on let's change those control points a little bit so it looks more more natural what you would expect there you go so there is a basic let's change your shoulders a little bit and get this right curve just again so it looks more like what we, we we would expect there you go so now i can have this person is ready to be the spokesman for our presentation now again play with this make some changes on these but play with this if you play with this you will get better and again sometimes it's just about knowing how to do things this is a great opportunity for you to do that if you only did it while if, excuse me if you only watched while i was doing this take this time before you go to the next movie to try to draw and make your own using those same points we had even if you have to watch a video and rewind it and then have powerpoint beside you while you do it give it a try and again this kind of stuff makes all the difference in the world when you're making a powerpoint so appreciate your time i'll see you in the next movie bye